Ramadan is a month-long feast that, for some reason, is called a fast. For Ramadan, Muslims basically flip the day-night schedule that most of the world's population normally follows. So many people around the world normally eat their last meal in the evening at dinner, let's say 6 o'clock p.m., then they eat again at breakfast, let's say 6 or 7 a.m., so there's a 12 or 13 hour gap between meals. Would you say that all of these people are fasting? No, because they're still eating. But during Ramadan, Muslims reverse that schedule and do some extreme binge eating. They gorge themselves with food right before sunrise, then they don't eat during daylight hours, then they gorge themselves with food again after sunset. So they actually have two feasts per day for an entire month. Food sales skyrocket in Muslim countries during Ramadan. Now, why would people who are having two feasts per day and who are consuming significantly more food than they normally consume claim that they're fasting? I don't know, but this is the religion that calls for the violent subjugation of the entire world and yet insists on being described as the religion of peace. So let's just assume that the rules of opposite world are always in effect whenever we are discussing Islam. An ongoing problem with basic Muslim practices like the Feast of Ramadan is that everyone in society is supposed to at least outwardly conform to the practice. So every year, reports emerge of people being arrested for eating during Ramadan. We'll look at one example. Morocco World News reports. Morocco's General Directorate of National Security arrested around 80 people on Wednesday in a cafe on Boulevard Anfa in Casablanca for publicly eating during the holy month of Ramadan. According to reports by local media, many of those arrested are teenagers from surrounding international schools. The videos shared on social media showed dozens of young people in front of the cameras with blurred faces in police vehicles. Residents interviewed by local media said that the cafe's owner is a Chinese woman and that they have already filed several complaints about the cafe for constant loud music and cigarette smells, but nothing has been done. A person has the freedom to choose whether to practice fasting during Ramadan or not. This, however, should not be done publicly out of respect to all of us who are fasting, one resident said to local media. You've got to love the definition of freedom here. Yes, you have the freedom to eat or not to eat, but only if you hide what you're doing. You can't eat publicly because that would make it harder on those of us who are feasting twice per day. We gorge ourselves with food before sunup, and we don't get to gorge ourselves with food again until after sundown. So don't make us uncomfortable by letting us see you eating somewhere between our two daily feasts. Publicly breaking the fast before the Maghrib sunset prayer in Morocco can result in penalties of up to six months in prison. Article 222 of the Penal Code punishes people who are identifiably Muslim who ostensibly break the fast in a public place during Ramadan without benefiting from one of the exceptions that Islam permits. This incident is not a first in Morocco. Every Ramadan comes with reports of police arresting public fast breakers across the country. Public eating and drinking in the daylight hours of Ramadan has long been a recurring debate in the country. This article continues, the link is in the description box, but I wanted to read part of a follow-up article that explains the reasoning a bit more. The arrests have revived a debate around the law prohibiting eating in public, with many activists calling for the law to be repealed. Article 222 of the Penal Code prohibits breaking the fast in public without a valid reason for people who are identifiably Muslim. Advocates of the law cite Morocco's status as an Islamic country and argue that since the majority of people during Ramadan are fasting, breaking the fast in public can cause discomfort and infringe on practicing people's freedom. Notice, if you eat in public during Ramadan, you're infringing on the freedom of practicing Muslims who aren't eating in between their feasts. How are you infringing on their freedom by eating? You're not making them eat, so how are you infringing on their freedom? These people really seem to think that freedom means freedom from ever seeing anything you don't like or don't want to see. So other people only have freedom, let's say freedom to eat, as long as it doesn't interfere with your freedom to never see anything you don't like or don't want to see. And this is the heart of Sharia. Sharia isn't just chopping off hands or executing apostates. Sharia involves prayer and fasting and all sorts of other practices. But there's always an effort to apply the rules, even rules about basic religious practices, to Muslims who don't want to follow them and to non-Muslims. That's very different from the rules of other religions. The rules of Christianity are for Christians, 
In the New Testament, if you didn't want to follow the rules of Christianity, the response from the church was, there's the door, use it. But in Islam, the rules are to be imposed on everyone, the entire world. And if you have a problem with this, if you say, hey, I don't follow your religion, I don't follow your book, I don't follow your prophet, so I don't want your rules controlling me, you're somehow the one who's violating their rights, their rights not to have their feelings hurt and not to see anything they don't want to see. And if you're looking at all of this from a non-Muslim country and thinking, there is no way we can ever allow this nonsense to gain control in our society, you're somehow the one who's intolerant. Welcome to Opposite World. This is a powerful religion. There's a reason to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah.